as Kedivin is now getting mo closer and closer to release, uh, what kind of game are we supposed to expect when Kedivin releases in uh, late May? That's a tricky question. What game of game did you enjoy? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually took my <laughs> next question there, because we got to play the game for like two hours. There was lots of time and there was like many games in one game. Uh, there was sh shooting, FPSs, puzzling. Uh okay, so if I ask you, what was the thing that you feel the most about the game? What was very special about it? The story. The story, especially. Oh, the story. That's nice. So, so basically, you you have all those mechanics in the game, but those mechanics were not supposed to be defining the genre of the game. Basically, I think that the overall gameplay concept and the game concept of the game would be like how make a game that will make the player feel different emotion through the game and all of the game mechanics basically they are here to enface those emotions more than be here to play it so you basically you have shooting you have exploration you have many different factor but it's the core concept is about how can we move the people feeling when they are playing the game uh, i think archer can give you some example yep some example. Yeah, yeah. do give us. Uh, talk about the guy. Talk about uh, the first guy in the yeah. prologue. Yeah. Oh, the talk first the guy. Why is the um. first guy in prologue here? Uh, so mm, you played the game, right? Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, you didn't know what to expect. You were probably very confused, no. right? Yeah. You are in the middle of nowhere. You have the gun, and all what you know is that you need to save some girl. Uh, yeah, you exactly. don't understand probably anything. <laughs> uh, then you are going out and you see some guy, right? Mm -hmm. So you starting to feel the tension. Yeah. Right. Then you are going inside the building and you have your phone and you are starting to, starting to investigate the stuff. Yes. Right. So the pacing is starting to be again uh, a little slower. Yeah, right? I did notice that, yeah. Okay, then you are going into the basement and yeah. out of nowhere, the pacing is going high and you are starting yeah. to run, right? Yeah. This is because of the sound. The pacing of the sound is increasing and yeah. it's creating all these emotions inside of you. Yes. Yeah, so then you see the girl <laughs> and you are confused again because you are in totally different pace, in a very mysterious space and you are investigating again, right? Yeah. And you are once again a little scared because yes. it's a zero. And uh, you once again are trying to investigate the stuff. And then, boof, you are inside your memories and mm -hmm. you are in some city and you are receiving quite good gun, yeah. right? You are trying to stealth, so uh, you are starting to feel very professional, yeah. right? And you are feeling like in the action game, like an action hero, yeah. right? So that was like 30 or 50 minutes of the game. And you had like totally different emotions in your in yourself. Yeah, that's on true. Every different yeah. level. Exactly. If I may add something, it's to basically explain that you start the game with the guy that is outside, and and this guy is not for enjoying the shooting. So basically, if I give you a gun and I give you a guy to shoot, you will say this is a shooter game. Yeah, it's a shooter game. Yeah. Uh, and that's not the case. The guy was here, and the mechanic around here was here to f make you feel the tension. Yeah. And then when you wake up in the asylum, just at the phone, the reason, the design reason is that okay, if I give you a gun, you are not scared. But I want to scare you. But you, I don't want to put people around. If you are smart very smart and you start the game you won't feel the tension because you know oh the designer didn't give me a gun so probably nobody will attack you still when you are playing you are like oh oh, oh something will yeah. just jump from nowhere and this basically the phone mechanic and how it's designed is to basically try to create that yeah. the next stage i'm give you the gun uh, but i give you the gun and you have the phone but you can use only one hand there is usually you would say why the guy is not taking his phone here and have the yeah. gun in the other hand but the design reason is that okay if i give you both of them then you will have always the gun and you will feel safe but i want you we want you to to make you choose then you have to choose and then when you have the gun then you are safe but you cannot explore and then when you are exploring maybe something will happen to you but basically you need to f it's to face the pressure yeah uh, there was actually something I needed to ask, because uh, at points the game felt like it was giving me some options. Like, 
when I had the gun, I shot everything I saw, and there was all these guys that weren't even hostile, and I, I shot even those. So, uh, uh, was, is there uh, the game actually said that said something to me after shooting those guys? So, is there any uh, should anything different happen if I didn't shoot the guys? If there are any any other options too? Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you remember the guy that you meet in the asylum that was asking you to rescue him? Yeah. Did you rescue him? Yes, I did. And what happened after? He attacked me. Ah, yeah. And before he attacked you, he killed a lot of guys. Yes. So you could just save those guys without, when you let that guy stay in the cell. Yeah, and the game said that every action has its consequences. Yeah, there yeah. were the consequences. And I'm quite sure that because you let that guy out, then you also play with the buttons. Yes. in the place. So probably you let out other psychos that will do something after the game also. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the branch, there is not only the branching, the things are changing, but they are connected with each other. So if you fail somewhere, then you yeah. will probably fail in the other place. And this is a, this is a butterfly effect. Okay, yeah. Is there any different endings or different story arcs if you choose differently in... Uh, uh, so Gadiven is pretty story-driven game. So. Yes. Uh, there won't be like any other levels, there won't be like very big changes, but yeah. the game is all the time aware of your actions. So yes, there will be like different ending, or at least with the totally different feeling, yep. uh, and there will be different events. But story overall is quite linear, because it's still the same story. Yeah, yeah we're telling, we're told about this, uh, this is a new type of telling stories. Uh, can you feel in more about that? How how this is a new new type of telling stories? How how that is <laughs> doing the renaissance of storytelling in video games? <laughs> oh, uh, okay, um, I'm not the one responsible for other people's speech, uh, but but still, when you play it even from the beginning to the end, there is no cinematic. There is no place where you are basically doing nothing. Basically, the whole experience is about you start the game. Uh, we try to remove all the loading and everything. So when you have loading, you have those videos that are fairly short, but they are just to not break the immersion. There is crossing from the beginning to the end. But it's there is mostly never a place when you will arrive here and there is a cutscene and and then you will s be able to do nothing and then you will see what's happening. It's always yeah. about trying to be interactive, but still always telling a story. So you have always this guy that is talking to you and that is creating the plot and the character, the main character is talking back to him and you have always the going back and you have the whole long story, but it's never about cutting it. It's always like feel the experience from the beginning to the end, probably. Speak about the writers. We, we cannot uh, j just take all the credits from the story, right? Because yeah. you spoke about the gameplay and you're supposed to speak about the story, right? Yeah, you wanted <laughs> to talk about them. Yeah. So, so basically, also, so the game was to create some kind of experience with the feeling. And we have the original story because the original concept of the story was uh, something that Wojciech Pazer wanted to do. And he said, okay, I, I want to create a game for adult for like people of my age and for peop what people of my age care. So he said, for me, I'm not scared of zombie, I'm not scared of alien because I know that they won't come. What, what is scaring me and what make my film move, it's about, okay, what would happen if if I lose my family or, or if I, all those kind of stuff. So basically the base story is like kind of mature, but like not saving the world. It's a very local drama that even you, you could be living if you were in this world. And then after we bring the story to some two very talented UK writer and we told them, okay, this is our story, we want to tell that. And what we really want to do is we want to play with people's mind and feeling. Can you do it? And basically those two writers, they are writer of an um, illusionist show in the UK that is quite famous and they say, oh, that's what we do for a living, that's just perfect, let's toy with that. And they spend a lot of time of trying to balance the information and how it's put in the game stage by stage to always kind of confusing people, uh, not misdirecting them, but put all of information in front of the noise of the guy and when he really finds what's really happened, it's like, oh, you are telling me from the very beginning, but, but, but I didn't see it coming, but you are not lying to me, it was in front of my nose. And I think, I don't know how you, if you like the writing, but I think with the voice acting we have and how the writing is done, it's quite, quite entertaining, I guess. Yeah, yeah I actually did like it. It 
uh, some something like two hours into game. At first, I thought it w- was going to be a horror game because of the setting and the sounds and all that kind of stuff. But when it proceeded, when I proceeded with the game and different things started to happen, I started to realize it's not a horror game; it's a drama. It's a different kind of drama, and uh, yeah. And it was really fascinating to see, and it was really nice to see what you guys done with the audio. As you said, there's lots of audio stuff going on, so these 3D audios and different kinds of sounds and musics. Uh, can you tell me something about the emphasis on the audio? Because it seems to be a really big part of the experience. Oh, that's also the topic very... <laughs> so I can go back to the... Because you said that, uh, Gediven, you expected the horror game, right? Yeah. You expected probably also the action game, right? Yeah. We are doing sp- especially that to build the expectation within you. Because yeah. when you were expecting the stuff, then we, we could hit you with something totally different and uh, and make correct emotions in you. So that's why every time when you're starting to feel the game, every time when you're starting to feel the pace of the game, we are hitting you with something totally different, right? Yes. When there was a horror game, then poof. No, it's yeah. not a horror game, it's an action game. When you feel that there's an action game, then poof, it's a drama, yeah. right? Then poof, it's something that are totally different that yeah, we have yeah. still to understand and yeah. explore. It really plays with your expectations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah nice. that's the point. <laughs> and going back to the audio. <laughs> audio? <laughs> so, um, I told you that there is no alien in the game. Yes. And that's basically the lie. Because they, if there is one alien, I think it's the guy that is doing the sound in the game, which is kind of, what do you say? It's I would say it's one of the most talented composer and sound director and uh, that I ever met in my life. And I quite have a long career in video game, but um, it's Olivier de Rivia. I don't know if you know him. It's a guy that it, he worked on Alone in the Dark. He worked on um, Remember Me. Yeah. He worked on Assassin's Creed also, and uh, basically we present him the game, explaining him the concept of how we want to do a game that will move people's feeling and try to play with people's feeling. And we ask him, oh, can you help? And he said, oh, that's really something that I want to do. That's so interesting. And, and basically, it's funny because you would expect that he would not we be willing to be part of a project of this scale because he's usually on very very big AAA production. But he really put his uh, heart on it, and he's really working like 15 hour a day on that now. And how he, he approached the stuff, he said, "Okay, uh, I'm not a uh, movie composer. I don't make sound for compo- uh, music for movie. I make music for video games. So for me, my goal is that." The music is interactive and is as interactive as the gameplay. So I d- don't just want to record music to have a nice orchestra and just play the music on the background. What is very important for me is that um, the music is dynamic and that will morph how the player will rea- uh, move. And if you do something, it will change the tempo. If you go left, it will change. If you go right, it will change. But it will always be done not just for creating the atmosphere, but just to drive the player and to make him feel and, and do what you want him to do. Yeah. And so basically, if you try the game, you feel that everything is basically done like this. Yeah. You have those pipes, you have the light, you have everything is put there to make the stage, but also craft the sound. And, and we were talking that there is funny place like uh, where uh, Gosha, which is the lead level designer, and Arthur were talking with Olivier about uh making some music for some stage but olivier were disagreeing saying that oh i cannot make any sound here there is nothing for me in this stage <laughs> it's it's a, there yeah there is a stage <laughs> particular this stage which is a forest when uh, olivier i asked olivier okay we need music during the combat and he said no <laughs> and why he said because again you are going to put just a random music in the background and mm-hmm. that will not work and it's not how it's going to work and then we have a hard time to convince him, okay, but we need to have something when the tempo is going <laughs> up to, to, to make the action going on. And it was like, okay, ca- what can you give me? And there was a train in the forest and he said, okay, if you make the train move, I'm maybe okay to make sound for you. And then we make the train move and now he's trying to composing the music with the sound of the train. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, what for you to see to experience. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, one last for you, uh, especially for you, because Ooh. you previously you worked with uh, Painkiller and Deadfall Memories, am I right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. How has it felt working with this kind of game, which is kind of hybrid of many genres, after 
strictly an action game and Deadfall memories. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I did like two action games. Uh, in the middle, I was making the um, simulator for the military. So basically, I was t very tired with just an action. Okay. Uh, our objective, but when we started to make the get even, was to not create other mainstream game, not create other uh, average game. Yeah. We wanted to create something totally different. We wanted to play with the convention, and we wanted to play with the gene. And that's the yeah. origin of the get even. So, okay. do we succeed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you do. <laughs> this is something completely original, all right. But hey, yeah, uh, get even is coming out on May twenty eighth. Am I right? Uh, this year, twenty sixth. Yeah, thanks for the correction here. Uh, May twenty sixth, and uh, well, I hope to see the final production. It's really fine looking for what I've played. And thank you guys for the speech. It's really funny talking to you. Yeah, thank yeah, you thank you too. <laughs> Thank you.